Hi, I'm Patukuru Free Fin Kyal, and in this video, let's talk about quantum long term equity value fund. In particular, uh, we look at its uh, recent performance and talk about what uh, existing investors should do. I'm also an investor in this fund, and I'll also talk about what I plan to do with it. So, I had reviewed this fund uh, only four months ago, and uh, so yesterday I had, you can see the link uh, above, and yesterday I had uh, uh, posted some disclosure on Facebook group Asan Ideas for Wealth. So I had said that uh, I've been an investor in quantum long-term equity since February 2013 and I last invested in this funds uh, in March 2019. No particular reason. I don't. I, I hold three funds for my uh, for my retirement portfolio and I just uh, basically do inky pinky punky with respect to what I should invest. Um, uh, so I don't, uh, I mean I invest every month but I don't put I don't invest the same amount in the same fund and so on. I don't have an SIP kind of an arrangement. But it's it's essentially a I mean I invest I do invest every month and I look for funds that have some kind of momentum in returns and I push more in that. Just visually I don't do any ma analysis or anything. There's no big planning in it. It is just um, uh, it's just eyeballing the uh, the 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 portfolio. Uh, I mean the returns of the fund. It's just mere eyeballing. I don't uh, claim this is great. I don't claim that uh, my method is superior. I just do it. That's all. So uh, I my current exposure is about 20-24% of my uh, equity uh, portfolio is in this fund. Uh, so and uh, when I made the video four months ago, the the annualized return was about 11-ish percent. If I remember right, you can check the video. I don't remember, but now it's about nine percent. I don't plan to sell my um, holdings. I will tell you why. Um, I'm going to leave them alone and I may invest more uh, if I feel like it. But of course, this is, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm at a stage uh, in, I mean, in my goal, uh, in my goal planning where I don't need to invest more for my goals, but I do invest and I, for me, downside protection or volatility management or risk management is essentially more important than higher returns. So for me, uh, investing in this kind of a fund makes a lot of sense. I'm not saying uh, that you should do it. You should personalize it. We'll talk about that. So with that said, uh, I had uh, I recommend Quantum Long Term Equity and Parak Parik uh, in my uh, mutual fund, hand-picked mutual fund list called Trondline. And for the last two quarters, the uh, Quantum Fund has been on uh, alert. And I had this time in, in the July edition, I had said explicitly that new investors should not, uh, should probably not uh, touch quantum because it will frustrate them and they can probably look elsewhere, maybe Parak Parik. I'm not saying Parak Parik is an alternative to quantum, that's arguable. But uh, I mean, within this category, um, that is a better choice. I think it will give you, I mean, it will give you both volatility management and slightly better performance. I mean, that's what is frustrating for me with respect to quantum because it's essentially a one fund uh, AMC although they've got other funds it's got very very little AUM in the others because it because of its direct stand uh, distributors don't like the AMC and therefore nobody's going to push those uh, push these funds and uh, because and because of that uh, its performance is important it's all very well to say I am you know, sticking to my investment mandate no matter what I'm sticking to my principles uh, I think the market is overvalued, so I'm. I will not buy more. I will. Uh, I will not. Um, uh, I will hold uh, 15, for 15, 16 percent of cash, whatever. All that is fine, but the end of the day, there should be performance. It is like school. I mean, you can talk all you want. You can. Pe when people talk to you, they can think you are intelligent. But if your marks are not there, it's very difficult to back you. It's very difficult to put money on, on you and say you will become a good person, good, uh, uh, you know, you will shine later in life. It's very difficult to say. That's essentially true for fund management as well. So that is the problem here. And um, and you should take a personalized call on this. So let's look at the um, performance in the value research fund page. So if I look at the last seven years, so this is the last seven years performance. You can see in the last seven years, it does not uh, manage to beat the Sensex. And the main reason is that after January 2018, when the mid cap and the small cap indices fell, the NAV of quantum long term equity was kind of more or less horizontal. Whereas the Sensex moved up uh, almost uh, as if it was a 
it was a different entity on its own while the mid cap and the small cap indices fell. Of course, the main point of frustration is that the quantum long term equity is essentially a large, large capish fund with a little bit of mid caps and small caps. And uh, uh, because of that, it is frustrating when such a fund cannot beat the Sensex over seven years. Whatever the strategy, over seven years, it should beat uh, something as timid as Sensex because it's it's getting that 1.28% expense ratio. I'm talking about the direct plan. So that, that the expense, extra expense ratio should be justified with respect to an index fund, I'm, I'm saying. It should be justified. And as of now, I think it is not justified. But for a person in my stage in life, that sideways movement is okay. I'm okay with 8, 9, 10, 11 kind of fluctuating returns. For me, I look at the fluctuations in returns. I I don't want a fund that gives me 25% uh, uh, once and then all the way back to 11% after 6 months. I would rather prefer a slowly fluctuating uh, fund in terms of returns. And that is the reason why I, I would like to stick to this fund. Of course, if you are in a different stage in life where you have to invest uh, regularly for your goals, if you have to keep investing more, then if you are if you are in a uh, accumulation early stages of accumulation, then this kind of a fund may frustrate you. Of course, eventually all the funds will frustrate you, whether it is index fund or passive fund, that cannot uh, be denied. Uh, you, at some point in life, you will you will recognize that lower expectations is the only way to be happy in equity investment. But until you hit that point, this front may be frustrating. So that is the reason for that. But if you notice, uh, this is this last seven year period. It has never had such a poor seven year period. So I'm moving the seven year window backwards in time. And you can see always that it has done reasonably well if the investor has been patient for seven years. It is only in the last seven years. This is the worst seven year time period for quantum. Of course, the fund house will argue that uh, you have to give us 10 years time, 10 years time. If you look at 10 years time, we have done better. But that is okay as an analyst and with for the fund to say that. But as an investor, I am not investing in this fund for returns. I am investing in this funds, fund for uh, reasonable growth in the corpus. Oh, I, I mean, I, should, I mean, I am investing in this fund for some reasonable returns and reasonable performance. Excuse me. Uh, and it should be in a reasonable time frame. I cannot wait seven years and not uh, have decent performance over the index because my goals won't wait. For a fund manager, the goals will wait. They don't have a goal and they all their their only goal is to outperform the, uh, the benchmark. And they can't say seven years is too short a time, five years is too short a time, give us ten years. That's not acceptable for uh, in terms of personal finance because my goals won't wait. And if I had if I get a poor sequence of returns. Eventually, it will affect my uh, my final return because most people cannot invest more uh, and they cannot compensate low returns by investing more. Therefore, uh, that's a problem. And if you look at the peer comparison here, that doesn't tell you, I mean, a great story. So this is the last three year uh, performance in terms of the monthly returns that used to calculate the um standard deviation that is the volatility and if you notice this is the this is the first in terms of the 15 value oriented funds in terms of the lowest standard deviation in terms of low beta this fund has the lowest beta so in terms of risk management it's great but in terms of risk adjusted outperformance uh, like the sharp ratio or the sortino ratio or the alpha it is not done uh, very well it is not on the top uh, uh, you know top uh, uh, top 5 out of i mean in, when there are only 15 funds you I mean, a good fund will be in a top seven or top five. It's not there. So, so it's clear its performance over the last three years has not been great. And you can see that also in the trailing returns. The last 10 years, this is the, this is the first fund in the category. Of course, there are only 12 funds then. Some of them are not uh, as old. Seven years, it's still okay. But still says rank in the category is one. But you can see its performance is not great with respect to the Sensex. It's one, almost, it's like a few percent uh, lower than the Sensex. Over five years, notice its performance has dipped to 10. Uh, three years, this is, I'm talking about peer comparison. Over three years, again, 10. Again, one can argue in the last one year or so, it has come back. But that's because the, this fund always does well when the market doesn't go anywhere. If the market starts zooming, this fund will not zoom faster than the market. That is a guarantee. It never does that. That's the character of the fund. So if you are a young investor, who wants uh, a little bit more action, a little bit more uh, uh, masala in your uh, daily uh, portfolio movements, this fund will bore you. But uh, so you have to take that personal call. And uh, I mean, 
I would suggest people in my age group, mid 40s, late uh, 40s, more uh, older than that, to to reach to have some patience and stay with the fund because, but but then you can't uh, be using this fund to uh, expect 15% uh, return. This fund will not. I don't think this fund will give you that kind of return. So it's it's simply not going to happen. I think 10 to 10 to 12 percent is a rough long term whatever that means uh, kind of expectations that you can have from this fund. So if you don't, then it's time for you to exit. But uh, personally, I'm happy with this. Uh, with this, my for me, the lack of volatility is very important. Whenever the market falls by two percent, three percent, I don't even look at my portfolio because I'm fairly confident I wouldn't have lost much because I don't even look. That 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 guarantee, that peace of mind is more important for me than um, whatever you want to call it, extra returns and so on. But you may be at a different stage in uh, in your. Uh, in your accumulation phase so you will have to take a call but whatever you do you must have a proper system I mean, you must uh, give the fund enough time to perform and uh, take a call suitably so that's what i want to say if you have any questions on this uh, please uh, let me know if you are an investor in quantum uh, fund this quantum fund let me know what you plan to do so that's what i have to say thank you bye, -bye.